So hello, I've got some emails that sound a little bit like chapter 12 homework help. So this video is here to help. So what we have in this question, which is a little bit like the assignment, the question in your assignment, is asking you to use the indirect method to prepare a statement of cash flows. So it gives you a few pieces of information. It gives you a balance sheet with two years of balances, 2015-2014, and it gives you an income statement. And you'll see this is a lot like your homework assignment. And then it gives you these pieces of extra information that we retired a note payable, that we purchased equipment for cash, and that we received cash for the sale of equipment. So we need to use this information. It's a little bit like a puzzle. Think of this as getting school credit for completing puzzles. And what we're going to do with our puzzle is fill out this statement of cash flows. All right, using the indirect method, of course. So the statement of cash flows has three parts. Cash flow from operating activities, cash flows from investing activities, cash flows from financing activities. And we're going to take them one step at a time. The thing with cash flows or with the statement of cash flows is that the first step is really easy. So we get one freebie and that is net income. We start with net income because if we're trying to figure out how much cash we brought in, a good place to start is what we're saying is our income. And so we need to make some adjustments, at least with regard to operations. And those adjustments come in two types. The first is that there are some things fake expenses, right? Like fake news, it's a fake expense. Here we have this insidious guy, depreciation expense. We're pretending, muhaha, that we spent $58,600 on depreciation. Why do we include that? Right, it reduces our tax burden, or at least that's what the finance side of me says. Here, we need to add it back because this number is too low. We never paid this. That doesn't exist, right? So we're going to add it back. Depreciation expense. We need to add it back. Didn't spend it. Never happened. Fake expense. Take that. The other type of thing that we need to adjust for are expenses or gains or losses, something that doesn't belong in the operating situ situ the section. It belongs someplace else, right? Who's that? That's here, gain on sale of equipment. That is an investing activity. <clears throat> Buying and selling property, plant, equipment, technology, right? Computers, land, anything like that. That is an investment activity. We need to remove that. And so since it was a gain on sale of plant assets, we have to say, no, 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 we didn't gain that. That is not an operational gain. And this third line is to trick you because that's all there is. Great, we did it, not too hard. The next section of adjustments we need to make is where we, we figure out, we use balance sheet items to figure out the flow of cash. And I'll explain some of them in detail, but I'll also just tell you some tricks. So what I've done over here is set up the balance sheet. You can do this with a piece of paper and a calculator. It's just hard for me to show you that. So I've made, here's the balance sheet. I've created a column for change, and then I've made this little column called adjustment necessary. And that's just there for you to look at. But Cash will enter this balance at the bottom, but we need to adjust these three current asset items. So I'm just going to calculate the change. So accounts receivable increased by 14,000, inventory fell by 22,000, and prepaid expenses fell by 1,000. The trick of the trade for these current assets is that when we're adjusting, we just flip the sign, right? So we can say accounts receivable increased by $14,000, increase in accounts receivable, 
we flip the sign, negative $14,000, right? The intuition behind that is that our income statement is based on accruals. So we count this $14,000 as a sale, right? Did we get the cash? Eh, no cash. Have to subtract it, right? So we'll flip all these signs. So let's just take a look at a decrease in inventory. Can you hear the rain here? Flip the sign, 22,700. We have a decrease in prepaid expenses. Flip the sign, $1,000, boom, we're done, right? Current assets taken care of. Let's move on to current liabilities. What's the change here? So our current balance is $25,000. It used to be $30,000. It's decreased by $5,000. What does that mean? It means we paid off an accounts payable, right? So when we had an accounts payable before, it used to be we, we calculated it in some previous period as an expense, but we didn't pay for it, right? Now we have paid for it. The expense showed up someplace else, but now the cash goes out. So a decrease in accounts payable We keep the sign, right, because we paid that money. Same thing for wages payable, same thing for income tax payable. Those were expenses in previous periods that we didn't pay for. Now we're paying for them, the cash is going out. So we keep the sign the same. Decrease in wages payable. Hope I haven't made any typos. You're supposed to correct me. If we were in a face-to-face -face class, someone would pop up and say, excuse me, Jamie, I think you messed it up. And then I would fix it. This is a little trickier because I hope there aren't too many. And so we've made all these adjustments. So let's just make a note here. Yes, we've adjusted these. We adjusted all of the current asset and current liability accounts that we need to. Why, you may ask, are there some dashes here? Those dashes indicate that those are totals. We don't adjust the totals. We just adjust the individual line items. So now we've got a cash balance of $151,410. And now our last, oh, our last section. You wish it was our last section. It's our next section, which is investing activities, which is the trickiest section on this assignment, which is purchasing of useful assets or selling assets that were once useful to the company. We get one, we get one gimme. New equipment is acquired for $57,000 cash. So purchase, no. Cash, what does it want me to call it? It may be paid, cash paid for equipment. Nice, we paid $57,600 for equipment. There it goes. This next one, it's an obnoxious question, but it helps us understand the relationship between purchase price, accumulated depreciation, gains, and sale, and how that all works on the income statement and in the ledger, is that they obnoxiously tell us that we received cash for the sale of equipment that we paid $48,600 for, and we get a gain of $2,000. Okay, so how much cash did we receive when we sold that piece of equipment? That's for us to figure out. So I created this little section over here. You can use a piece of paper or Excel if you want. And this is designed to help us. So what I've given us is the ledger account for equipment and accumulated depreciation and a little worksheet to figure out what the price that we must have received for. I'll walk you through it. So our T account, our ledger for equipment, we started, we have a beginning balance of $15,500, right? And then we've made a purchase of $57,600 in cash. And then we sold something that had cost us $48,600, so we've got to subtract it. And then our final balance is going to be, it should be equal to that $124,000 we see here. But let's just make sure that everything is working the way we want it to. 
Great, $124,000. Great, perfect, got it. Let's do the same thing for accumulated depreciation. It's gonna have credit balances. So our balance to start with is $9,000. We have a depreciation expense, $58,600. And we know that our ending balance is $27,000. What we need to know here is how much accumulated depreciation we eliminated when we sold this asset, right? This is our big giant question mark. So the answer to that is simply that our balance was 27,000 and then we had that expense and that was our beginning balance. I'm sorry I said that wrong. This is our new balance minus our expense minus our old balance is 40,600. It's negative just because that's the way it works. 4,600. I type that in. Now that balances. Well, what did that rigmarole tell us? It told us the accumulated depreciation on that asset that we just sold. So let's put in some numbers. We purchased it in the distant past for $48,600. Since we purchased it, we have accumulated $40,600 40, in accumulated depreciation, which means that that book value is the purchase price minus its accumulated depreciation. $8,000 in book value. We're getting there. Can you feel it? We're so close. Because now we know that we've got a $2,000 gain Right, and so if the book value was eight thousand and we got a gain of two thousand dollars, it means that we must have sold it for eight thousand dollars plus two thousand dollars. We must have sold it for ten thousand dollars. Wow, got it. What are we gonna call it? We're gonna let's try if we had cash paid for the first one. Let's try cash received from sale of equipment. Let's try it. We received $10,000. I think that's pretty good. We don't need these next two lines. These are the only two items that we have. Okay, the last one, and not so hard, are our financing activities. So financing activities is raising capital in the form of selling a bond, selling stock, um, but then also we can internally finance by retaining some earnings if we earn net income and we don't pay it as dividends. So we need to take into account retained earnings, dividends paid, stock sold, all of those great things. So the first one that we're told, a $30,000 note payable is retired at its carrying book value in exchange for cash. That's a gimme, right? So what did we do? We paid cash for retiring notes. Yes, $30,000, remember to make it negative. All right, also, just for fun, you can look over here and see that our notes payable. This difference, new balance minus old balance, All right? negative 30,000. We could follow that same method that we used for these other liabilities and just enter it with the same sign and that would make our adjustment. Well, we've got these two adjustments to make here. We sold some common stock. Old balance minus new balance. $60,000. That means we got cash from the sale of stock. Cash, stock, these are tricky. Cash, received from stock issuance. That's what we want, $60,000. Great. And the last thing that we're gonna need to need to, the last thing we're gonna need to know about is dividends. How much did we pay as dividends? It's another puzzle. You love puzzles. I love puzzles. How do we figure it out? Well, what we need to know is that net income goes to one of two places. It's either held as retained earnings or it's paid as dividends. We're given net income on the income statement, 99,510, right? Retained earnings, we can capture that here. 
new balance minus old balance, we added $9,200 to retained earnings. That means that all of that income that didn't go to retained earnings got paid out as dividends. So either the company keeps it or they give it to their shareholders. Those are their choices. They gave $90,300 to their shareholders. That's an outflow, $9,300. Boom. We have done operating activities, which, by the way, in your assignment, isn't separated into these two categories. You'll see when you get there. It just makes it easier. Don't worry. We've done investing activities. We've done financing activities. The last thing we need to do, here's my little note, enter balance. We need to enter the amount of cash we had at the beginning of the year, right? 44,000. So now we know that cash increased by the amount of 43,510. We had 44,000 at the beginning of the year. That means that our cash balance at the end of the year is $87,510. I can tell you though, that I don't think that's the right answer. I don't think there's a one at the end. Let's see where my mistake is. Check my work. Cash paid for income taxes and cash paid for dividends. It doesn't like either of those. Oh, it doesn't like that title. Okay, I got it. Cash paid for income taxes. Let's call that decrease in income taxes payable. Fine, be that way. And cash paid for dividends, did I get the number right? Net income, my addition to retained earnings was 9,200. So that's actually 9310, negative. See if you guys were in class with me. So now that's correct. I'm not gonna do the second bit because this video is already too long and you're tired and you don't have to do it on your homework. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Happy calculating, and if you have any other problems that you'd like me to work, please feel free to let me know.